بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد We should always be cautious about excessive praise of one another because unfortunately that opens the door to Ain that someone can give you the evil eye and another harmful thing with that of course is it can make the person also arrogant themselves believing about themselves things which perhaps might not be true raising their status to a, a level in which they might not be it might not be befitting of them or they may not be truly at that level so there's many harms when we get into excessive praise and that's why you see the ulama and first and foremost from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, rejecting that rejecting that you could of being excessive in praise of one another and that's why there are supplications in the authentic sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding those things and one of those supplications is a supplication for the one for when someone is being excessive in their praise praise in praising someone and how should we deal with that how should we react to that what is in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how should we deal with that when someone is praising us being excessive because as i mentioned it can be harmful in many many ways and one of the ways that we can deal with that which is in accordance with the prophetic sunnah is by saying the supplication which protects us from that so if a muslim is praised by someone this is how we should respond by the dua that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma la tu'akhidhni بما يقولون واغفر لي ما لا يعلمون واجعلني خيرا مما يظنون that if a person is being praised by someone they should supplicate to Allah look at look at everything in Islam returns us back to Allah because Islam is about the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that that's the the foundation of Islam you know we became muslims we left disbelief we left other lifestyles and ways of life to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so everything the believer does even when he sneezes there's a response an islamic response a way and even when going to the restroom and so forth there's a a proper way to cleanse yourself in accordance with islam to make it a means by being obedient to Allah and following the commands of his commands and the commands of the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam then it becomes an act of worship so in this supplication the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said that when you're being praised that you should say o oh allah please do not do not hold me accountable for what they say and forgive me for what they don't know and make me better than what they think that that dua is beautiful and it is comprised of three main parts first the supplication to allah ex uh, exhorting your lord o oh allah allahumma la tu'akhidhni bima yaqulun please don't hold me accountable for what they what what they are saying so first you're imploring your lord to 
not hold you accountable, to free you from what they're saying. So in case you're not, uh, you're not as they are, are praising you, that you're work, that they're building you up, and that could build you up for arrogance. It can set you up for failure. It can set you up for someone putting the eye on you, the evil eye. It can set you up for hasid, that people could have hasid towards you when someone else is praising you. Oh, they're praising this guy, and, 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 and other people hate on that. They, they hate that, and they hate on it. Muslim haters. So you have to be cautious of that. So the first part is you're imploring your Lord, and you're freeing yourself from that, from what they're saying. The second aspect of the dua then you're seeking forgiveness. And forgive me for what they don't know. Because they don't know what you do. They don't know the sins that you do. You might have that outward appearance of taqwa, as we mentioned. But, alhamdulillah, <coughs> they don't know the sins that you commit in private and open. No one knows except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yourself. And some sins are so minute, you might not even be aware of. But Allah knows. So the second part of the dua is you're freeing yourself. And you're making istighfar to Allah. For those things which the people are unaware of. The sins that you do. That they're unaware of. That only Allah knows. And the third part of that dua and make me better than what they think. So then you're imploring your Lord again to ask Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make you better than what they think about you. So they think you're a great person. They think you're a righteous person. They think you're such a pious person. They think you're a person who calls to Allah. They think you're a person who always worships Allah in the masjid. They think you're this and they think you're that. And you're imploring Allah to make you better than what they think of you. To make you better. So it's a kind of rectification. You're asking Allah to rectify your situation. To make you better. To make you better than what they think. And in fact, more often than not, we're worse than what they think. Because they don't know what we do in the depths of the night. And this makes me, and this is not, I'm not praising myself, but I recall a situation where I... I used to live in a place in Aden, Yemen, and I used to work there at this time. And there was a man, a Yemeni man, who used to see me walk to Fajr, the Fajr prayer. And because perhaps, unfortunately, many of the people who don't pray there, he used to always say to me, Wallahi antamin ahla jannah. He used to say, I swear by Allah, you're from ahla jannah. And then I really didn't know about the ruling about that. But I would just say, you know, I, I didn't like him to praise me like that. But he used to always do this. And so I asked that Allah doesn't make me from the people of the hellfire because of this. Because of his excessive praise. And then I found that myself that I feel sometimes that I was in a better state way back then when I had less knowledge. Now I have more knowledge and I feel that I'm weaker. Perhaps it could be from this man's dua. Perhaps it could be an ayin. That we actually become weaker sometimes, due to someone else's excessive praise, and them being excessive, and may Allah protect us from that, may Allah bless us to be from Ahl Jannah, Jannah to Firdaus, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.